Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. The treatment of uh, a refractory and relapsed classical Hodgkin lymphoma is uh, predominantly dependent on second line therapy followed by autologous transplant for patients who are eligible for transplant. These are usually the, the younger uh, patients who have no um, uh, other comorbidities. And there are several uh, regimens used in a second line setting that never compared head to head, but they seem to be probably equivalent. The most widely used regimen in the salvage setting, at least in North America, is called ICE, I-C-E. In Europe, they use DHAP, D-H-A-P. Uh, but there's also, what, so these are both called platinum-based regimens. But there's also regimens that um, use gemcitabine. These are gemcitabine-based regimens. And the most widely used two regimens called GEMOX and IGEV, I-G-E-V. But regardless what you use, the goal of a second-line therapy to achieve remission, preferably complete remission, and then take the patients to autologous transplant. As a package, if you achieve complete remission with salvage therapy, then take the patient to autologous transplant. About 50 to 60% of the patients are expected to be cured of disease. There are a number of risk factors uh, uh, prior to transplant in patients with Hodgkin lymphoma that predict their subsequent outcome. And the question is, how can we use those risk factors in determining a transplant strategy? So, for example, um, if you put together results of many retrospective studies that are being conducted for patients undergoing transplantation for Hodgkin lymphoma, a few adverse prognostic factors emerge. The patients who appear to do worse are those who have primary refractory Hodgkin lymphoma. In other words, they never responded well to the first-line regimen. Those patients who relapse within a year of their initial chemotherapy are generally regarded as being a poor risk group. Interestingly enough, we have uh, some data um, that was published a couple of years back now that suggests that in the modern era, we maybe need to move that cutoff somewhat. It, it always used to be said that the bad risk group was the group that relapsed within 12 months. Uh, we have some data that suggests that the, it's people who relapse within three months who are actually the particularly uh, at-risk group. But early relapse, primary refractory disease, and the presence of extranodal disease um, at the time of the relapse are generally regarded as being bad prognostic factors. So when we're looking at designing studies um, around transplantation and some post-transplant consolidation strategies in Hodgkin lymphoma. At the moment, it's those groups of patients who are typically chosen, selected to enter those studies because they have a relatively poor risk after transplantation. Um, patients who don't respond to first-line salvage therapy, let's say a patient get ABVD, achieve complete remission, then you give them ICE or DHAP, and they don't respond well. So the question, what to do next? That, that's what we switch from platinum-based regimens to gemcitabine-based regimens. So let's say we give someone ICE chemotherapy, they achieve only minor response, we switch then to gemcitabine-based regimen. If they don't respond to gemcitabine-based regimen, we don't think of them as plant transplant eligible, so they could be offered then the newly, well, not, not so newly approved, drug brentuximab vedotin, see if you can convert them to a transplant eligible patients. Alternatively, you can put them on clinical trials with novel agents and so forth. Again, the goal, regardless of whether second or third, the goal is if you have a relapse or refractive disease, to achieve a remission by whatever means and then take the patient to transplant because that's, as of today, the only potentially curative regimen of track record for this patient population.